Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. As always, when you leave a like, when you leave a comment, when you subscribe or do anything to help this channel, it is always very much appreciated, especially leaving a like. You know, like leaving a like. I just want to see if it worked three times, if anybody would actually leave me a thumbs up. I'm back. Yes, I'm back. I was away for nine days. Isn't that incredible? It's kind of nice to be back. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. It says technical analysis. Bitcoin corrects lower. Why Bitcoin remains in uptrend. Imagine my surprise when being away for nine days. Like I came back. And I started reading the cryptocurrency. You know, first of all, during the course of the nine days, I did not check the market. <clears throat> and I am very proud of myself. I did not know that that was actually possible. Didn't check prices. Didn't check any news. Didn't even see anything that was going on. So imagine my surprise when I returned and the cryptocurrency market was literally exactly where I left it. A lot of the news is that at the memento uh, prices are down, but prices look like they're going up. Not joking. It says, despite forming five consecutive bullish daily candles, Ethereum fails to break above $3,000. If I remember correctly, I think Ethereum was at 2,600, 2,500 when I actually left. I was I was going to uh, name this video something Ethereum-y. Uh, because there's so much Ethereum is amazing news inside of it. You'll see. On top of that, it says Bitcoin tanks below $41,000 as investors curiously look out for $40,000 support. This one says Bitcoin. There we go. Bitcoin and Ethereum correct gains. Ape crashes by 40%. So looking around on the interwebs, what I've been able to deduce is that uh, these corrections that we're seeing for Bitcoin and Ethereum aren't real corrections. It seems that we are still in that uh, a very tight trading range between the $39,000 and $42,000 Bitcoin price, the $45,000 Bitcoin price still being the number that we allegedly need to be able to pass by for Bitcoin to actually go higher, to reconfirm the uh, the bull market, for us to go to new all-time highs and Bitcoin to hit $987,400,000 and one cent at the same exact time. The other part was, um, is Ape. I was not here for Ape becoming a a thing. So as once again, as far as I understand it, this is tied to the Board Ape Yacht Club, uh, B-A-Y-C, as it's labeled everywhere, where apparently I think all holders, so I read, have been gifted um, some portion of um, Ape Coin, with a couple of them actually making cryptocurrency headlines, uh, basically because I think one user received around $800,000. Worth of Ape, I think one got $1.6 million worth of the coin. I assume it has to do with the amount of uh, apes you hold. This is not the first time that something like this has happened. This has happened on other platforms before. It has happened on Rarible. If you're on Rarible or if you sold on Rarible, you received certain rare coins. Or if you have other cryptocurrency projects like the uh, like the Damien Hurst one, there's always like a uh, r residual. I guess you can say a residual. Like, and, in, 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 you know, you bought this. Now here's this kind of thing, but I believe this is the first uh, NFT project that released their own cryptocurrency, and the news being is that two days ago when I was looking at the news, rather today, looking at the news from two days ago, uh, apparently this coin spiked by 100% in price due to the optimism, because this is supposed to be a longevity project, this isn't meant to be a, um, um, what do you call it? Uh, I lost my words. The point is, they're supposed to have a TV show and movies made and their own metaverse and all this other stuff, so you get it. Longevity, yada, yada. But the news basically being today that the price fell down by 40%, but I mean, you know, it's just realistic. If you go by 100% in one day, odds are you might slink back down just to a normal price once again. This was also, I mean, relatively popular price news, but I think people just like to gloat or to... Uh, revel in the fact that 
uh, something they don't own has fallen down in price and therefore it ends up making more news because we all know if everyone had some ape coin and it crashed by 40% it'd be a lot sadder news but you get the idea this one says ethereum classics price has surged by 19% in the last 24 hours i looked around i couldn't find any actual this was actually the only website the only one Talking about Ethereum Classic's price surge, it is currently up by around like 8 to 9%, down from the 19%. Not sure what caused it. I assume it's something behind the scenes because it's always this way. It's either an update or an upgrade that is supposed to be proposed or is going to happen in about a week. Or it's some type of negativity about Ethereum and their upgrade and therefore people are like, I don't want that anymore. So they move over to Ethereum Classic. It's how it's been for the last five years. It's just kind of is how it's always going to be. Anyway, on top of that, there's a lot of like really weird price news. And I told you a lot of it revolves around Ethereum. It says Ethereum whales pick up $8 billion pace while Ethereum nears $3,000 for the first time. Is this also something similar? Yes. It says the triple halvening could be the perfect storm for Ethereum. So I also did not know this either. And I think this is going to be quite spectacular when it actually does end up happening. I did not realize that Ethereum's issuance rate is also going to be 10% of what it currently is. Someone made like a, a, a joke meme thing on Twitter. For those of you not looking at it, it says issuance now, 15,000 Ethereum per day. Issuance at merge is 1.5 Ether per day. And then it's someone having a party or standing, he's a wallflower. And then he is saying they don't know as everyone else has uh, fun around him. There was a lot of news about Ethereum accumulation. Ethereum being taken off of cryptocurrency exchanges, uh, Ethereum being put into uh, cold storage wallets. Uh, if you've never been here before, I'm pretty sure nearly all of you have. Hello, once again. The idea being is that we can usually, based off of uh, a couple of companies, usually Santiment and Glassnode, usually those two, tell where coins are going. We may not know explicitly the face of the person who owns them, however... We can see that if there was a wallet that's only been accumulating coins for the last seven years, i.e. only coins are going in and coins are never going out, well, therefore, we can kind of assume that these coins are probably not going to be leaving anytime soon. So we keep seeing the amount of coins in these wallets continuing to rise. There's also a really important part about that as well. However, it says since the beginning of this year, 550,000 Ether have been withdrawn from exchanges signaling that holders are confident that the price of Ether will rally to move their tokens into cold storage. This brings the ETH balance on crypto exchanges down to a level not seen since June of 2018. This is according to Glassnode. On Tuesday alone, 180,000 Ether left exchange-held wallets, which is the largest net outflow registered in a single day since October 2021 at the same time into the block noted that 190,000 ether were deposited into Lido's liquid staking pool. Lido is a DeFi platform that lets users who don't have 32 ether in order to run their own node to participate in staking by converting their ETH to the platform's staked ETH. In total, 1 million ether have been staked in the last 30 days. There's a lot of back ground rich people activity happening and so many people are not paying attention i but this happens every single time it does not matter the market it does not matter the place it is always the same when prices are down especially historically in the cryptocurrency space i will tell you this right now rich people are buying in mass and i don't mean they're buying i think we should buy like one eth today honey okay that sounds kind of cool no these people are buying up massive amounts of it while prices remain down i cannot explain to you exactly the intricacies of how whales make whale moves and still keep the prices as low as they currently are but notice especially here's the chart right here 
how much Ethereum is continuously taken off of cryptocurrency exchanges and locked into these actual uh, Ethereum 2.0 merger de de deposit contracts. It's happening at a rapid pace. There's also, I mean, I don't feel like I have to say any more about the amount of Ethereum being taken off of um, cryptocurrency exchanges and how much of it is being actually locked away. I'm going to assume that these numbers are true. Stay, stay with me here. I'm, I'm going to assume that this is the actual current issuance rate and therefore it's going to actually drop by this uh, as well. If you were here, I believe it was 2018 or 2019, forgive me, it's been a number of years. We had news that when Bitcoin would have its next halving, Ethereum was doing something similar. It was basically kind of like a network consensus kind of thing. Everyone said, yay. The network said, yay. And then it got activated in this way. And Ethereum's um, daily issuance rate also fell quite rapidly. And then I think it took about a good five or six days for the price to actually spike. The really fa and, and I know, 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 and I know. And I know this is going to happen. Whenever there's an upgrade or an update or a uh, having, it's always this. It's always the same. Like crypto, just like history, continuously repeats itself. I'm going to assume that when this merge does eventually happen, we're still getting um, Q2, quarter two. That is to say, late June. I would not be surprised if they say July 5th. You know, uh, along the way. What always happens is, is the event takes place. Prices leading up to said event may have risen as anticipation grows. Everyone gets very excited and then prices drop. It happens every single time. All the naysayers go, well, <laughs> that, that was a good pump. And everyone pats themselves on the back because they don't own an Ethereum or enough Ethereum. They say, well, you know, I knew that prices were going to fall. It takes about a good month maybe three, long stretch to three months, prices begin to boom. And I mean really pump and start going really hard because the actual whales behind the scenes realize that they're not accumulating as much Ethereum as they previously were before. They realize <laughs> magically all the Ethereum that they've been buying, all the Bitcoin that they've been buying, all the other coins that they've been buying, there's not as much as there previously was before. I read somewhere, and it might even be in one of the other next tabs, uh, that apparent so long story short when you lock up your coins in the the eth2 protocol the way that it works for other blockchains as well and i've seen a lot of people discussing this because i think that a lot of people are not used to what this actually is going to be the idea is you put your coins into the protocol to be able to stake them you stake them to be able to make the extra passive income cool got it a lot of people are under the illusion or the confusion that you'll be able to take off all your coins at once from these platforms. This is not how it's going to happen. This is the same exact thing for those of you who remember, what is it called? Steam. S-T-E-E-M? Whatever one, whichever one the cryptocurrency was a long time ago in 2017, the, the crypto space had its own social media platform from the makers of EOS, but it ended up being like a weird website where people just were posting videos of them going on vacation. I'm not joking. It was just the oddest thing in the entire world. Um, if you had coins on that platform staked into the into the protocol and you tried to take it off, you would be told, I think you could take out your coins, I think, in two days. And then also, I think you would get a, what was it, fractions of it until it took about a month to take all of your coins off. And I know a lot of you were going, well, that's terrible. Nope, that's actually how it should work. Because... <laughs> Imagine if, let's say there's only 1 million Ether, just to simplify the actual numbers, and you have 900,000 Ether in the, in, in, in the protocol. Cool. Only 100,000 left is floating around somewhere. It's under somebody's bed. Someone's using it to go buy a sandwich, whatever the actual case might be. Let's say Ethereum's price starts dropping and everyone's like, ooh, I don't like this. And they take off all 900,000 Ether of the 1 million that was in the protocol what happens to the network? It collapses completely. You can't even then trade your coins or move your coins around because the coins that are inside of the protocol to protect it, the proof of stake to secure the network are gone. So the way to take your coins off, same as every other major staking protocol, is you can do it little by little 
to ensure that everyone doesn't take it out at the exact same time. But as you know, that's another thing that I think that people are going to have to come to terms with. Like this isn't meant to be fast money. This entire thing that we are talking about around crypto has to do with longevity. Rich people are not buying Ethereum, are not buying real estate, are not buying Bitcoin, are not buying everything else that they're investing into, especially art, to sell it in a year. That is, forgive me, that is little money mentality. You buy these assets, not financial advice, to hold on to them forever or for a very long time to see them mature and to continue to grow in price as you hold on to said asset. You do not buy a home for $200,000 if you can still find one for that cheap. You hear next year it's worth $230,000 and you go, sold! Because a couple years down the line, that house is worth half a million and you're like, unsell, I, I, I want it back. There's a really interesting book if you have a chance to uh, find it or read it or add it to your reading list. It's called, um, I, I, oh gosh, what's the exact name? I Sold Warhol Too Early. I think that's the name of it. I must have spoken about it before. It's a really interesting read. Very crazy concept. This guy, uh, basically after, I'm going to move on from here, don't worry. Uh, after Andy Warhol uh, passed, I believe in 87... I think it was 87. Uh, there was a there was a number of people who ha had his works, and usually the idea is if an artist passes, you know, oh, <laughs> time to cash in. So I think this guy sold his war halls, a couple of pieces. I think around 1990, in anticipation of a of a heavy spike in price. I believe he bought something around 25,000. Ended up selling it for half a million, patted himself on the back because also in the you know 1990, half a million dollars was actually an extravagant amount of money. <clears throat> so. As time went on, he, he saw that it actually came back up for uh, on auction. I think about maybe 10 years later, he decided to sit in on the auction just to see exactly you know how much higher it would go than half a million. He was expecting maybe 600, 700,000. I think it sold for like 10 million and he was like, oh, okay. Well, it's not, it's not, it's not that bad. I'll, I'll be fine. He went back to another auction another five or seven years later. I think it sold for 21 million and he was like, "Huh. I could I could definitely use 21 million dollars right now." That's kind of the point. A lot of people are in it for the short term, and this is why whenever we get news that these these these, these legs are wow. Uh whenever we get news that uh these people are accumulating crypto and putting it into cold storage, just understand its significance. Yeah. So, um, so, uh, wow. Well, anyway, it says Ethereum flashes ultra bullish signal. Nearly 200,000 Ether are withdrawn from exchanges in a day. And the other uh, price point not to be left out because, you know, this has to be, of course, in the news as well. It says Bitcoin breakout is imminent. Here's when Bitcoin's price will hit 68,000 US dollars. Um, Sure. Why not? Not to downplay it, because I would I would love to see Bitcoin hit $68,000, but it's more of a uh, just let the market do what it's going to do. But we get one of these every single day. We, we, we constantly get a Bitcoin's price is down, Ethereum's price is down, here's the next time Bitcoin is going to hit $900 million. So, cool. That's all the price news. Bit of a doozy, because there's a lot going on in the market and in the world, and uh, just understand once again, I've seen people discussing this online, as to why all asset prices are dropping. It's Russia. I don't know how else to put that. Uh, all markets are affected, and it just so happens that... Uh, the cryptocurrency and the NFT market are also part of the risk asset categories. And therefore, if people are leaving other safe haven assets and those are dropping, the risk assets are also going to drop as well. Just thought I'd throw that back out there because I saw a little bit too many comments all over the place where people talking about why our price is dropping and I'm like, it's because of one country on the planet. Alrighty, that's all the price news. And yeah, let's move on. In the second most popular news story of the day, Tom Brady, a seven-time Super Bowl champion and legendary NFL quarterback, 
has tweeted his admiration for Vitalik Buterin, the creator of Ethereum. To conclude, Mr. Brady thanked Vitalik Buterin for his contributions to the cryptoverse, emphasizing that the autograph NFT project <clears throat> would not have existed without him. The GOAT, he said, was Vitalik Buterin. Here's the tweet for it right here. And Vitalik tweeted back, thank you so much for your kind support. Vitalik praised Tom Brady for his warm words of encouragement in a follow-up tweet. Tom Brady tweeted to respond to Vitalik Buterin's admission that he had no idea who the NFL quarterback was. So, uh, oh gosh, this was the most, the second, second most popular news story of the day. Uh, basically, Tom Brady is clearly into crypto. Said he likes Vitalik Buterin. He admires what he's done. Vitalik Buterin responded back. Cool, bro. Thank you so much. Love you. Can't wait to see you. But then it was like, oh, I also have no idea who you are. People made fun of Vitalik Buterin for not knowing who Tom Brady was. Vitalik Buterin is making billions of dollars every month. He does not have to know who Tom Brady is. If he, if, if, if Vitalik Buterin didn't know who Michael Jordan was, I would still go, I don't care. Because he's making billions of dollars per month and he's trying to build a world payment system. So let it slide. There were way too many people making fun of Vitalik for that. Uh, the other part was Vitalik Buterin actually made it onto, um, nom, 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 what do you call it? Mm, he made it onto Time Magazine's cover uh, for the most recent one. I haven't read it. I mean, I haven't read Time Magazine in a long time. Anyway, he also got mocked for that as well because I think... People just have no lives, and I think they find time. I think people wait for things to happen on the internet for them to be able to spread their negativity as quickly as possible to everybody else. Did you Did you make it to the cover of Time Magazine? Oh, no, you didn't? Oh, well, sorry. Well, Vitalik Buterin did. Anyway, that's the um, Tom Brady Vitalik Buterin news. This was in incredibly popular. I actually assume it's, it's more so for Tom Brady than actually Vitalik Buterin. I'm sure they're going to have a red flavored drink by the ocean. I have no idea where I was going with that one. Um, popular news. Everyone keeps making fun of Vitalik while their bank accounts continue going down. So that's just how the world works. That's the Tom Brady news. Can't believe it. Can you guys believe it? I just didn't assume that he was into the cryptocurrency space. It's not like any other rich people are. It's kind of weird, right? That's the Tom Brady news. And yeah, let's move on. What? Also in the news, blockchain analytics firm Santiment is pointing out some on-chain metrics developing behind the scenes for Bitcoin as Bitcoin's price tries to rally above $42,000. The intelligence firm says that the overall supply of Bitcoin on crypto exchanges has slipped down to its lowest levels in over three years. I can't believe it. Why is that happening? They said Bitcoin's ratio of supply sitting on exchanges continues dropping hard down to its lowest level since December 2018. They said there is, or there are? There is. There is 13.5% less Bitcoin on these exchange wallets compared to just two months ago amounting to 1.6% less of the overall supply. I can't believe it. That's so crazy. Why is this all happening? Remember how we've been talking about that for a number of days now. Months. It's definitely been months. The amount of Bitcoin and Ethereum, there's also some other altcoins that are being taken off of exchanges, but you know the market would tend to follow the news from the top two most popular coins over anything else. Uh, this isn't surprising. It's going to continue happening. Over and over. Uh, these people know where the prices of these coins are going. What I think it is, now hear me out, I, I think a lot of this has to do with uh, retail fatigue. I think a lot of newer people in the market, hear me out, or people who may simply not have $50 million to put into the market, I think a lot of these people... Um, as is planned by the rich people, have been washed out of the market. The idea being a lot of people got into crypto as they always do, and more people will do so again when the market does eventually go back up as a quick way to make money. 
you may have noticed, haha, over the last six to seven months, prices have dropped. If you are still here, I, I'm tipping my digital hat to you, but you are going through the mud right now, so to speak, the proverbial digital mud. It smells a bit, you don't really care for it. However, if the market does today, I don't know, go back up in price, you would make money. Logically, got it. Your friends, however, would have missed the last seven months of you walking through the mud, and their only connection would be, I saw him make money. I haven't seen him in seven months, and he's still making money. So I think a lot of people who got into the market left, logically. The other part being the people who are still here, or those who may be on a frustrated basis quite continuously because the market has not moved up, I, I think they lose sight very quickly. And this is why I think, he, here's my opinion, why I think we see whales and older players in the space, the older wallets, continue to accumulate Bitcoin and Ethereum, while the newer wallets, who may still be active or still listening to the videos, are not buying now because they don't see the merit in buying for some reason when prices are low. This happens every single cycle, all the time. People don't buy, normal people don't buy, when prices are low, simply because it's, you know, why would I buy when the prices might continue to fall? They usually don't look at the actual inverse, not financial advice, let me buy now when prices are low, even if they continue to dip, when they will eventually be higher. Um, I'm gonna tell you this right now, just because it seems completely relevant, a lot of you know that I am on VV. If you didn't know, well, here's the information for you. A lot of the prices on VV have also dropped, regardless of what they're actually putting out. But a lot of the things that they're releasing, at least comic-wise, are not bad. Usually, some of the comics they release are hot, steamy, diarrhea garbage, like really, really bad. But a lot of the stuff hasn't been terrible at all. A lot of the comics they've been releasing have actually, I won't tell you which ones, I, I may make a video at some point, actually are going for like 800 to like 1300 in physical form. The, 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 the ones on VV are actually selling below retail price, and I'll be honest with you, I'm buying them all up. I mean like 50, 60 of the commons at a time, because I know that even if I bought this for $6 and it drops down to five, why would it do that? At some point, it's going to hit $12. It's going to hit 15. It's going to hit $18 and I will have tripled my money just by simply buying when it's low and waiting. And this is what whales are doing, uh but they're also just accumulating massive amounts and, and, and it's happening behind the scenes as well. Think about that. That's what always gets me during the day. That's what always 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 gets me. When you are walking down the street, you can't see this activity happening. When you're eating, waking up, walking down the street, when you're at work, whatever you're doing, this accumulation is happening behind the scenes, like it's happening through the airwaves. They're buying up all this crypto, and even people within the cryptocurrency space aren't taking notice. Always think about that. The cryptocurrency space is a very tiny market. Now imagine the other 95% of people on this planet who have no idea what's going on. That's the significance of these rich people buying all the Bitcoin and all the Ethereum. Imagine if Ethereum's issuance rate does go down to one-tenth, and let's say the price spikes back up to five or 6,000 where it was before. What normal person is going to be able to afford an entire Bitcoin or an entire or a half of or a quarter of or a tenth of an Ether or a Bitcoin? These, are going to, these people are going to be trillionaires, and I think even people within the cryptocurrency space are not prepared. So that's the Bitcoin is being taken off of cryptocurrency exchanges news. We've been getting this news for as, you know, as long back as I can remember. It's going to continue happening. And yeah. Let's move on. Also in the news, and I, and I, I, I wholeheartedly expected this to be super popular news. This was the only article I could find. 
Crypto exchange Coinbase has announced support for the Solana ecosystem on Coinbase Wallet's desktop extension. According to the Coinbase blog post, they said users can now manage their Solana and Solana tokens alongside their tokens held on all of Coinbase Wallet extension supported networks, including Ethereum, Avalanche, Polygon, Binance Chain, and many more, which allows users to unlock more of Web3 without needing to manage multiple wallets. I thought this would be super popular news. Whenever we get anything, I mean, maybe more so in the past, about Solana or Polkadot, my goodness, prices would, comp I mean, sky rocket. But cool. Coinbase has added support for the entire Solana ecosystem. I assume we have a lot of Solana holders out there. Uh, the price did not move like I expected it to. I was I saw this and I was like, well, clearly Solana's up by 15%. No? Weird, huh? Yeah, that's the Solana news. So let's move on. Also in the news, this is mega pop. This was super duper popular news on Friday. Crypto investment firm Pantera Capital CEO and co-CIO Dan Moorhead shared his thoughts on the crypto market. Moorhead's comments were made while he was being interviewed by Matt Miller on Bloomberg Television. With regards to Bitcoin's price, he said, basically, Econ 101 supply and demand every two years. Ten times more people use cryptocurrency than they did in the past. And that's been going on for a decade. Every two years, it's 10 times more. And every two years, the price of crypto has gone up 10x. And to my mind, it's that simple. Within the next five or 10 years, almost everyone with a smartphone will use cryptocurrencies. And if that's true, they're going to be at a much higher price. I love the simplicity of the logic. If they're using it, the prices are going to go up. Miller then asked Moorhead, if that means that Bitcoin could be trading around $400,000, roughly 10 times its price in 2025, he replied, I think it actually will be some number like that. All the use cases that are already rolling out and people are using it. And now, institutional investors are really investing in the space from taking it, you know, like, <laughs> I love that he said like there. Take in the space from taking it, you know, like 10 or 20 basis points to maybe in 10 years, 8% of their portfolio or something like that. Miller then asked Moorhead, what will happen to the price of other crypto assets? He says, Bitcoin has been amazing. We've owned a lot of it over the years, and I think it's going to go up another 10x over the next five years or something like that. But most of the new innovations are in other things. There are hundreds of really interesting tokens out there, many of which are essentially companies built on top of Ethereum or Polkadot or Solana. And those are kind of the new small caps that have the potential to go up 100x or some of these bigger numbers. Anytime we get to any, any wealthy person talking positively about the cryptocurrency space, it makes the news, the popular news, 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 news. But on top of that, it's the CEO of Pantera Capital, one of the largest cryptocurrency bulls on the planet. And him talking about Bitcoin's price is going to be 400 or 500,000 over the next five years as we keep seeing more people into the cryptocurrency space. It's a, uh, what do you call it? It's bullish news. This was one of the most popular news stories. I only have one tab open because it seemed redundancy uh, to have 95 tabs open of the exact same thing, of the same basic message. Uh, once again, rich people are not in this space because they expect prices to drop down forever. They also believe at some point prices are going to hit astronomical numbers. Yeah. That's the Pantera Capital CEO believes that in the next 10, wait, no, in the next five years, Bitcoin will 10x and other cryptocurrency projects that have smaller caps have the potential to, to do 100x in price as well news. And yeah, let's move on. And in the most popular news story of the day, I feel like I missed something while I was gone. Why this was the most popular news story, 
I don't know. Cryptocurrency exchange Binance has informed the Ontario Securities Commission, or the OSC, that it is committed to ceasing oper- op- whoop, there we go, opening new accounts for Ontario residents and winding down certain supplies services to comply with regulations. Why was this popular news? Cryptocurrency exchange Binance sent a letter to the Ontario Securities Commission on Wednesday. In the letter, Binance listed a few commitments to the OSC, including ceasing opening new Ontario accounts, ceasing trading in existing Ontario accounts, with exceptions to protect investors, along with winding down its business in certain products and providing fee waivers and offering fee reimbursements to certain Ontario Users, in addition, Binance will also make reports to the OSC staff and retain an independent third party to ensure the effectiveness of its efforts to implement its commitments. Uh, sure. So I assume the Canadian regulators have some type of an issue with Binance because America, because it was America and Singapore and Australia, they had problems with Binance. So I assume the next English speaking country also has to do the exact same thing. And I guess it's just in Ontario that they have a, a, a problem with it. Nowhere, nowhere else. So, um, super duper mega mega popular news i mean i was waiting for news like this i i've been i've been i've been tired of them working in canada for so long without any proper regulation hasn't everyone else why was this popular news did i did i miss something while i was away okay well i guess not all right so Binance is going to shut down in Ontario and there's no other cryptocurrency exchanges to use. So, you know, I guess what was us here in Canada? Why was this popular news? Yeah, I, I, I know none of you know either. All righty, <laughs> let's move on. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters, GBU Wally. Formerly known as Professor Wally, Bubble Mode, How's Life Austin, Auspicious Agile and Blockchain, Jamie Saad, Blockchain Simplified, and let's move on. Empire Queen, Fud Weiser, Roman Geba, Bitcoin Ben, Arachno Dave, Tony Ambroski, The Dealer's Den, Captain Something in the Z-Way Lay, Mobarazi, VB Nerd 21, Miguel Grolet, Lauren De Silva, Quoted Bitty, Troy All Good, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Patrick Noster, Navarro Williams, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Martin Stoyer, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, A Bibliophobia, Todd Mollis, Adam Grasick, Wise Night Owl, there we go, 242 to the World, Bank Roll Network, Crypto Artist, Coldy 3D, Setsuna, Richie Rich the Third, Paxis Nick Mangialavori, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Yes to Crypto, Bodie McBoatface, Anytime Fitness, Monks, Corner Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigero Macho Nisa, on crypto with Lionel and Crayola Michelle URL. Thank you all very, very much for your continued support. Thank you to everyone out there who is still listening, who is still watching, everyone who left a like, who left a comment, or who has subscribed. If you are still here watching, type in why was Binance News popular? Or like why Ontario? Why? That one sounds a little bit better. R- type in why Ontario? Why? 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 Why you not like Binance? I don't understand. At the moment, Bitcoin is currently at 41,175. Okay. US dollars, it is down by 1.6%. Much of the market isn't down, down. It is just like a slight curve downward, light red prices. Ethereum's at 2,888. Uh, Luna is up by 2.5%. Avalanche is, ironically, you know, because it's an avalanche, up by one percentile point. You see a lot of the, they're all trying to do the same exact movement as Bitcoin's price trying to move up right now. Uh, but Chainlink is up by 0.14%. Leo is up by 2. Ethereum Classic is up by 7. See, it was up and then it kind of went down over the course of time. Waves is up by 4% as well. 
about it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh Iota. Iota's number 58. Found it. Found, found it. All righty. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be on this ridiculous planet. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening, and I will most certainly uh, be talking to you all soon. See